Hello everybody out there in podcast land, this is Mr. Folly, and we are going to look at pH equivalence, which is very different than pH not at equivalence, so we're looking at titrations. Um, why don't my A's ever show up when I do that? Um, you know, if we're not at the equivalence point, we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. Um, but to do this, we're going to have to do two ice diagrams, and we're looking at a kickback here, which people hate when I say kickback until eventually it makes sense. And then the last thing we're going to do is molar masses with titrations. Again, just to give that to you because we forget so often. Um, these slides are basically just doing a bunch of problems, so hopefully you have your homework sheet next to you. Calculate the pH equivalence point for the titration of one molar ethylamine by one molar perchloric acid. So you need to recognize that perchloric acid, well, first of all, they gave us pKb for um, ethylamine, but not for perchloric acid. Why? Perchloric acid is strong. So here's what we're going to do here. The pH at the equivalence point for the titration of one molar ethylamine by one molar perchloric acid. So I'm just going to assume there's one liter of each. I like to do my titrations in moles. Um, so I'm going to say C2H5NH2 plus, um, I'm just going to say H positive because it's a strong acid, is going to give me C2H5NH3 positive. I hope that doesn't freak you out. Remember, this is a base because it's got a KB, and anything that ends in NH2 grabs onto an H. So I'm going to assume we've got one liter, because it doesn't tell me anything else, so that makes my moles a little easier. So that means I'm going to have one mole of this, one mole of this, before I titrate it, and zero. This reaction is going to go to completion. So the nice thing about a titration is my two reactants are going to be react completely. So minus one, minus one, plus one. So at equilibrium, I have zero, zero, and one. Now this is an equilibrium system because we have a weak base. So what I have to do now is kick it back the other way. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is flip this C2H5NH3 positive. Um, is now going to react with water. I don't know why I'm putting the water in here. I guess we could do it without it, but I like it better that way. And I get C2H5NH2 plus H3O positive. And, of course, the H3O positive is what's going to um, determine the um, pH. So I have one mole of this and one liter, or whatever it is that we're doing. So we've got, we're going to kick this back in molarity because I want to pH it. Okay, so normally they'd give you so many milliliters, so many milliliters. So you do your reaction in moles, and then you're going to find the molarity of this right here. And that's going to be where you're going to start with this in molarity. So this is one molar. We're lucky enough it's all in one liter here. Um, starts out zero, zero minus x plus x plus x, 1 minus x, x, and x. I'm going to switch colors to red so you can see where I'm going here. Um, now, I've got a couple of things to do here. My pKb for this is 3.25. Now, this clearly is not acting. My C2H5NH3 positive is not a base, so I really want to look at the Ka of its conjugate. Now, we talked before about how pH plus pOH equals 14. Well, pKa plus pKb equals 14. So I'm going to get the pKa of this by 14 minus 3.25 equals pKa. So that is 10.75. Yeah. So if I want to find the Ka of it, Ka equals 10 to the negative 10.5. Seven five. So second log negative ten point seven five is Ka equals one point seven eight e negative eleven. So uh, now that I know that, I can set up my equilibrium expression of Ka equals x squared. Oops over 1 minus x. So 1.78 e negative 11 equals x squared over 1 minus x. Uh, solver time.
um, or not, if you can recognize, e to the negative 11 is very different from 1. So 1.78 e negative 11. I guess I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to square root that. So second root that answer. And x equals 4.22 e negative 6. And it says calculate the pH. And that molarity is H3O positive. So if I'm going to find the pH of it, it's negative log 4.22 e negative 6, which is either D or E. I guess I do have to put it on my calculator. So negative log, second answer, is 5.37, which would be E. See, so the first thing you do is you titrate it in moles, and you kick it back in molarity, because they're usually asking for the pH or the concentration of something. Let's do another one. I hope. pH at equivalence. That's what I just did, but let's do another one. A solution, this is number 43. Containing 10 millimoles, ah, and 5 millimoles, ah, is titrated with one molar HCl. What volume of HCl must be added to reach the first equivalence point? OK, ignore sig figs. Well, I don't like to do that, but we'll have to do it anyway. So HCl is going to react with which one first? Um, HCl, the H in HCl, is going to be most attracted to carbonate. Um, it's going to be a better base. It's KB would be much larger, because remember, the Ka of HCl3 is much less, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, it's negative 2, negative 1. So let's go ahead and set up the system of CO3 negative 2 plus H positive yields HCO3 negative. By the way, this is a buffer system, so I'm trying to overwhelm a buffer. 10 millimoles. Now, I know you can do it in millimoles, but I just hate doing that. So I'm going to make 10 millimoles be 0.01 moles. Oh, that's right. Yep, that's right. 0.01 moles. Um, and then HCO3 is 0.005 moles. And again, because I'm titrating it, I like to label it. It's in moles. Um, what volume of HCl must be added to reach the first equivalence point? So um, to reach the first equivalence point, that's going to be where H positive is going to equal my first base. So I need, because I know this is going to go to completion, I need, let me change colors for emphasis here, 0.01 moles. This looked like it was going to be more evil than it was, but I just need 0.01 moles. So what volume of HCl must be added to reach the first equivalence point? So all I'm going to do is molarity equals moles over liters. Um, hmm. And I'm going to have um, my molarity is 1.01 .01 over liters. So 0.01, which would be 10 milliliters. Um, and that would take care of the first equivalence point, okay? Because it's going to take this first. And there really is kind of a pecking order when we add acids and bases to things. So you need to identify CO3-2 as being by far the best base, okay? It's kind of like the uh, guy with the most money gets the good-looking chicks. That's why old guys are dating 20-year-olds. It kind of happens that way, too. Oops. Why did I put an F there? That makes me wonder. Hmm. I'm a little worried about that one. Well, I've talked about this one in class. Because apparently I had some reason for thinking it's 2.5 milliliters. Hmm. All right. You have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar aqueous solution of each of the following acids. You titrate each with 0.1 molar NaOH, so all those are the same. Rank the pH of each of the solutions when they are titrated to the equivalence point from highest to lowest. PH. Okay, so we know if it was a strong acid, strong base, and we're using a strong base, strong acid, the pH would be 7. Um, a weak acid, we know would be below 7. So a weak acid, below 7. So my conclusion is the weaker the acid, the, wait a minute, a weaker acid would be, my bad, above 7. Um, the weaker the acid, the higher pH at equivalence. So my weakest acid is HCN. 
So it's going to have the highest pH from highest to lowest pH. So that's going to be first because it has the lowest value. So that means it's going to be HCN. Then it's going to be um, acetic acid. Then it's going to be HF. Um, so I'm looking for ones the HCN first. Um, from highest to lowest pH. Oh, and they throw an HCl too, just for kicks and grins. So HCl will be the lowest. So HCl, uh, 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 A. Anything else they're tricking me with? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. It's mean to stick an HCl in the middle of there for no good reason. In an experiment, this is from our worksheet from before, 1999E. Um, Kb is 1.8E negative 5 for NH3. We found that earlier. So if you dig that out, an experiment 20 milliliter sample of 0 0.0180 molar NH3 was placed in a flask and titrated to its equivalence point and beyond. Determine the volume of 0 0.0120 that was added to reach the equivalence point. So this is nice. MV equals MV. Um, everything's monoprotic and monohydroxy. So I'm going to do my base one first. So 0 0.018 times 20 equals 0 0.012 times x. And the volume of acid is 0.012. What am I doing here? 0 0.018 times 20 divided, oops, 0 0.018 times 20 divided by 0 0.012 is 30 milliliters. So I should make sure that it looks like it's 3 sig figs equals 30 point zero milliliters. Determine the pH of the solution in the flask after a total of 15 milliliters was added. Now notice, this is the halfway point of a titration. If it's the halfway point of a titration, we get to be all happy because that means it's in the perfect buffer region and pH equals pKa or pKb, right? So, or pOH, that means pOH will equal pKb. All right? So, that means when we do this, we know that the Kb of ammonia is 1.80 negative 5. So this was my answer to little 1. So my answer to little 2 is negative log of 1.8e negative 5 equals POH negative log 1.8e negative 5. which is 4.74, which is pOH. So pH equals uh, 14 minus that, 9.26. Somewhere I need to say half way equals pH equals pKa. I need to indicate that, which I guess I did. No, I didn't. Halfway point of titration. Otherwise, it's got, there's no reason why you should possibly have that. Determine the pH of the solution after 40 milliliters of 0.012 molar was added. Now, in this case, we're overwhelming the buffer because we know we only need 30 and we're going beyond it. Um, when we overwhelm the buffer, what's kind of interesting about it is the thing that's going to be there in the greatest proportion is the strong acid. So the acid-based thing, um, your base is going to be all used up and converted into conjugate acid. And what's going to impact the pH, only the acid that's left over. So what we should do is do an ice diagram and show this, but because, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let me insert a little slide here. Uh, insert a blank slide. So 40 milliliters of 0.0120. So 40 milliliters of 0.0120 molar HCl. And I forgot what the base was. And we had 20 milliliters of 0.0180. 20 milliliters of 0.018 molar NH3. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, remember our first titration, whenever we do titrations, we should do it in moles. So 0 0.0120 times 40 would be uh, 0.012 times 40, whoops, times 0 0.04 would be 4.8 E negative 4. So I've got H positive equals 4.8 E negative 4, and my NH3 
again all I did was molarity equals moles over liters, which I should show the work for, but I'm a little low on space here. 0 0.018 times 0 0.02 is 3.e, whoops, e negative 4, and that's going to give us um, NH4 positive. And initially I have none of that. So these are in moles. And remember, the reaction always starts out to be in moles. And it's going to go to completion. So minus the smaller one, 3.6 E negative 4. Minus 3.6 E negative 4. Plus 3.6 E negative 4. So at equilibrium, I'm going to have 1.2 E negative 4 nothing, and 3.6 E negative 4. Now, is this a buffer system? No, because we have an acid and another acid. Okay, so it's not a buffer system. But this is a weak acid, and this is a strong acid. So the strong acid is going to be a million times more powerful. So really, the concentration of this isn't even going to be all that effect important. So what I'm going to do is take this, which is in moles, and I'm going to convert it into molarity. Um, so 1.2 E negative 4 moles divided by 40 plus 20.06 liters. So 1.2 E negative 4 divided by 0 0.06, which was the sum of those two, is 0 0.002 molar. And that's the molarity of H positive. I think the question asked for pH. pH equals negative 0 0.002, which it's not negative 0 0.022, negative log 0 0.002. Negative log, that answer is 2.70. All right, major species in a titration. Consider the following information about a diprotic acid, ascorbic acid, H2AS for short, molar mass, blah, blah, blah. The saturation curve with standard HCl is shown before. Now, notice this is weird because you're starting out titrating it with AS negative 2 and adding acid to it. So I'm starting off with this. So which of the following is the major species present in point 0.4? So notice right here, I'm starting out with AS negative 2. And this is my first titration, plus H positive yields HAS negative. That's the first titration. So that's the equivalence point for that first titration, titration number one. This is the best buffer, re buffer region for titration number one, step one. Step two is HAS negative um, plus H positive yields H2S. And see, that's what's happening at point 4. That's the equivalence point for, it's not H2S, H2AS. And that's what's happening at step 4. So in step 4, all of my H positive is used, being used up because it's, this is a very good base. It likes to absorb that. So at that equivalence point, I have H2AS, and there's going to be a little bit of kickback, right? So the dominant species, first of all, will AS negative 2 be there? Not at all. Well, H, so that's not going to be there. H positive is not going to be there because it's almost all going to be absorbed by this. Um, the dominant species is almost always water. But at the equivalence point, I've e turned all of my HAS into H2AS, and this is the dominant species. This would be present a teeny tiny amount, but only from the itty bitty kickback, which would be negligible. And the major species is always water. It was there. What's a major species in point 3? This is the halfway point. So this is the buffer region for that second titration. Second titration is right here. So the major species would be, um, because the buffer would be the acid and its conjugate, HAS negative and H2AS. HAS negative and H2AS because it is that magical buffer region, which is nice. So as you go through those things, the buffer regions always have significant amounts. That's the halfway titration point for those. Okay. Um, and V1 would be titration number one, and V2 would be titration number two, if you want to think of them as being separate titrations. 
Uh, molar mass from titrations, molarity equals moles over liters, moles equals mv, moles equals grams per molar mass. Um, so looking at these things, this is molarity, the equation for molarity. And if we look at mv equals mv, right? If I solve for moles, it's um, mv, right? v liters could also be volume. And then moles, definition of moles is grams over molar mass. So looking at mv, we can say that mv equals grams over molar mass. So here we go. Number 56. A 2.27 gram sample of an acid H2X requires 45 milliliters of 0.5 molar NaOH for a complete reaction, removing both protons. The molar mass of the acid is, so we just said the formula was MV equals mass over molar mass. So the molarity of the base is 0.5. The molarity of, oh, let's see here, the uh, volume is 0.045. Remember, it should be in liters equals the mass, 2.27 um, over the molar mass. Now, when I look at this, this would mean if it was a, um, a one acid kind of deal. But since it's H2X, um, this is going to be the number of moles. So moles of base equals half the moles of the acid because it's M2. So once I solve for molar mass, what I'm actually going to do is double that number. Okay, so I'm going to solve for molar mass here. So this is actually moles of base um, would be half the moles of acid because I get twice as much. So first I'm just going to solve for it. So mm, 2.27 divided by 0.5 divided by 0.045 equals 100. Isn't that interesting? Actually, 100.9, 101, if you want to get all picky on it. So if it's 101, then that means it would actually be double that, 202. And it would be double that because it takes half as much. So it would be 100.1 if mono, well, mono didn't show up at all. But it's diprotic. Yeah, but it's diprotic. So that's where why you need to double it. Review. We're going to get out of here in 25. Titrations go to completion. Conjugates at equivalent point kick back to affect the pH. Titration is in moles. Kickback is in molarity. Think about what is left over in partial titrations. Um, titrations can also find molar mass. Halfway titrations are best buffers. pH equals pKa. That was a review from before. Have a good one.